Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a daily vlog every day through November. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, competitive play and keeping track of life and how important it is. I'm also going to talk about the floor rules and how I think there needs to be a little bit of an addition to them or a change. Um, although I'm going to be reaching out to Wizards after this video and trying to talk to them about it directly. Um, I was down at GP Portland and Signed in Blood was there. Their website is there in the background. Uh, they signed this uh, Life Counter book for me. Um, if you are playing in a competitive REL event, I strongly encourage keeping track of your life and keeping notes. It is one of the things that will improve your play the most. After a game is done, you need to be able to go back and look at that game, figure out what happened, uh, see what went on. In chess, it's really important because you can actually walk through the whole game. But if you can take minor notes while you're playing about what's going on in the game, it will help you find areas where you made mistakes. And when I talk about mistakes, I'm not just talking about when you lose, also when you win. Most of your mistakes that you're going to learn from are going to be in your winning games, the more competitive you get, because you're going to have this uh, positive win percentage when you start playing really seriously, and you need to look at each of those games and find the mistakes. The other things that keeping track of life this way does is it helps uh, keep the game honest. If you have this score sheet back and forth and there's ever a dispute, you can go back through it with a judge and usually get it ironed out. Uh, very, very important that way. Another nice thing about taking notes that some players don't realize is whenever you look at somebody's hand, you can write down everything that's in their hand. So you should not be surprised when certain cards come out and then cross those cards off of the list as you move forward. Uh, if you are playing against um, somebody for a second time, you see it on the score sheet, maybe you played against them in an earlier grinder event, you can even look back before the game starts and try to see what you can remember from that game. Taking notes is essential to becoming a very strong Magic player. It is a skill that I brought over to Magic from chess, and I cannot stress to you how important it is if you want to get better at Magic. Uh, now, let's move on to the floor rules here. I've got up the MTG floor rules under electronic devices, and this was actually one of the most uh, disheartening things that I saw as a change in the floor rules recently. I understand the reason they did it. At the competitive and professional level of rules enforcement, during drafting deck construction and playing of matches, players may not use electronic devices capable of taking notes, storing notes, communicating with other people, or accessing the internet. Now. They're doing this to try to shut down on cheating. That is a great noble thing to do. Strongly in favor of it. I understand that it's also only at the competitive and professional level. Uh, if you see my notebook here, my notes, really bad. Very difficult. I can s usually get the numbers. The particular things that I write down, though, very difficult to even tell what they are. Why? Number one, my hands shake. I've got a tremor. The more I try to hold them still, the more they shake. So as long as I don't uh, try to hold them still, they're not bad. Uh, if I drink alcohol, they get better, although I don't think that's conducive to my chess or magic game. Um, the other thing is I'm dyslexic, so I switch letters around, and I'm a horrible, horrible speller. I can look at something, write it down, and it doesn't even turn out right. So in those cases, I would much rather use a device like this. What I would prefer this rule to say is that you must have that device verified in airplane mode, that it has no outside contact with anyone else. So it limits the amount of access. Now, I haven't actually approached the DCI yet about asking for a reasonable accommodation. If I was going to get back into seriously grinding uh, PTQs, GPs, maybe before the legacy GP comes back to the Northwest, um, I would actually go to Wizards with documentation and show that a reasonable accommodation would be using a basic note-taking program on a device like this with it in airplane mode so that I could read my own notes. Uh, I think that there's a little bit of the unintended consequence trying to shut down cheating with this rule that it actually harms individuals who rely on electronic devices on a day-to-day -day basis in order to read their own handwriting, which I don't think was the intent behind the rule at all. 
Uh, thanks. This has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. I put out a full video today on the Commander Top 10, and I'm going to have a speculation video looking at the Commander deck specifically a little bit later this week. If there's anything you want to see coming up, I have so much room for extra topics here with the vlog every day. I'm willing to take any ideas. Thanks.